What we're looking at here is fairly obvious if you're a ham radio guy and uh, you've been paying attention to the channel for a while or you can, you can go back in time and look at previous videos. Uh, what we've got here, well, it's a Stable Lock 4015. This is a radio test set and this is an ICOM ID51 two-way ham radio. It's uh, currently configured to receive on 434.5 MHz and it's set to transmit at a minus 2 MHz split which is pretty typical for, um, for my region and you can see this is the uh, oscilloscope type display so if I do this A, a Euro feature, the 1750 tone for repeater access, considered obsolete nowadays, uh, but uh, still supported occasionally, and a built-in feature on the European models, at least. Let's see, you might be able to hear here, I'm also generating a tone with this test generator here. Let's see, bump the there. And we can go back to the duplex display here as well. And no, you don't need calibration. You're fine. And you can see there we're receiving. Now there's not a lot of power there. As much you're able to see, we're reading about minus 14 dBm, which is um, not a whole lot. Uh, what's that? About 50 microwatts. But it does appear to be working. And I can do this again. 1746 is what this reads for frequency. Uh, no, what's interesting about this, if I can maneuver some cables out of the way, and we just come up here, is this fiber optic thing here. So we have the radio there. You might be able to see that. So you can see here, signal strength meter, full signal. And back in. So how does this work? Turn this up. We have here our trusty ID51. Sadly obsolete because it's D-Star. This is connected through a 10 dB attenuator and it's going out through this black wire here which comes back up and that's this wire it's going into this thing which is a two-way splitter and it has the two blue coaxes here coming out going into an amplified pin receiver and a laser and each of these have fibers coming out of them two white ones here and they go into these couplers and then into some more fibers. We can follow those along. They turn blue and red. Handheld isn't the best for this. Here we go. Goes into this little metal tube here and there's one interesting property. Bang him and stops working for a second. Uh, this metal tube here then comes out into another white fiber which comes up over here and this one goes up and over and down on the floor there and comes up as these two fibers again this one goes into this pin receiver right here and the other one goes into this laser here which is the, the these two are basically identical to the ones over here but this is part of a larger project that I'm just using this part for a demo. And then we have the same splitter and that goes down to here. So what we basically got here is a system where we're transmitting radio over fiber two ways at the same time. And what we're actually doing here to get isolation between these two, because these lasers are identical, they're on the same wavelength is these splitters here, PLC splitters, actually have isolation built in. Because of the way these things are built, 
Now, these PLC splitters are a bit complicated, but they're essentially, you can just think of it like if you were to take this fiber here and just melt it into these other ones, you get about half the light coming out each way. Now that's not how they actually work internally. They're, they're sort of a chip of some kind with a couple of different layers uh, that ends up scattering the fields uh, in the, um, inside the fiber. So it's a bit more, or the modes inside the fiber, so it's a bit more complex. But essentially, if you put some light into this, for example, this blue one here, you then just have, say, a termination at the other end. That's a low return loss. And you look at the power coming out of the red one here, you're barely going to measure anything. You're going to have uh, possibly as much as 50 or 60 decibels attenuation. And that's why I'm able to hook up these two radios. Well, I only had the one radio that was suitable for this. Uh, because I'm running this on the super low power, which is 100 milliwatts, and um, the other one available only had a watt, and I didn't want to dig out a whole bunch of attenuators. Uh, now, what, what can this be useful for? Uh, well, not that much, really. Uh, I think what it could be most useful for, I was just watching this video where a guy built a submarine. He was uh, doing, uh, you know, remote control and stuff of it. And obviously you can't do remote control with a submarine over radio because it's just going to get attenuated. It's not going to work. So what he did was he had this little buoy on top, or buoy, I guess, depending on where you're from, uh, where he just put the antennas up. And uh, that actually worked. But what I was thinking was maybe you could run a fiber. So, so what this thing would be useful for is if you have two radios that want to talk to each other, but you want to stretch that over a long distance without any kind of RF involved, well, this would be a pretty good idea. Uh, this, uh, this is the sort of thing you could also do. This is a, uh, an active antenna system. So you'd, you'd hook up your antennas to the plugged TNC ports here. You have gain control here, and you have two antennas, and they come out and go into the laser after it being amplified and filtered a bit. I've put all the RF stuff away, because that's not really interesting. And I've stripped this down to the bare essentials, and this is sort of what I wanted to try out uh, when, I, when I went to set this up. So we got our laser here, and then the fiber here is the white one. It's going into an adapter, and it's going into our power meter. And what you can see here is we have an output power of, you know, around about 2.5 milliwatts, about plus 4 dBm, uh, which is about right for... Uh, for this laser source. It's a 3 or 4 milliwatt laser. So, take that away, disconnect it, and then what I've got here, this is the common port on the splitter. You can plug that in, and then this one, these two really, are the split ports, and they should give us about half the power. So what we expect here, yeah, is about sort of three-ish decibel reduction in power. There's some losses inside the splitter as well. So what's interesting now is I don't want to put the power in on the common port. I want to leave the common port disconnected. So we're just going to put that over there and you can see our power meter reading has now gone down to zero. So I'm just going to take the other split port. I'm going to hook my laser into this one. And what you see here is a reading, but it's very, very low. I mean, what you're looking at there is right around 60 decibels attenuation. So this is fantastic. And this is really what I wanted to, to demonstrate, is that this is the common port still, is that we have great attenuation and isolation here. And as I'll show you, part of the clue to getting this to work is to use these green APC contacts, because if you start bringing in these blue ones here, that just messes everything up. So ideally, you don't want to be doing what I'm doing here. In fact, I don't need to do it, I think. I can unplug that one using a green one and just get rid of this adapter cable. We can go straight in here. And you can see we're actually measuring slightly less, but that's just because this detector is a bit less sensitive to uh, APC contacts. So we can actually redo our reference measurement here. Uh, all these fibers were clean when I started. I have tracked them in a, 
microscope, you can see, yeah, now we're reading two milliwatts. So that's our sort of extra insertion loss from putting APC directly into this um, UPC or PC detector. But essentially it's going into air in here. It's, a, it's the same as far as the fiber is concerned, it's going into air when it's going into a power detector like this. You can see we actually have a better figure here. The return loss has gone down more than uh, the extra insertion loss we got from putting APC into the detector here. Anyway, I've got a second power meter here. It's not as good as this one actually. This is actually sort of a multimeter. It's, it's, it's a neat device. I can plug this into the common port now. Like that. And you can see, you know, it's reading, this one would read about a milliwatt, this one's reading, you know, 800 microwatts. So this one's a bit under compared to this one. And I've checked this one and this one's more accurate uh, against the calibrated detector. Than, than this one. So this is the one I trust. And what you'll notice here is that the, if I unplug this, it does change a little bit. Maybe. Not a lot. This is right down in the noise floor of the detector. Now, what we can do is we can demonstrate the benefit of using UPC contacts. That's a UPC end. This is an FCAPC in one of these little SC adapters. So what I can do now is I can just plug this in and you can see instantly, look at that, minus 25 decibels. And I, I, guess, I think I cleaned this one, but if I start touching this, it doesn't actually change all that much. You can clean it, not much happens. And since you remove that, right back. Now you might say you recognize this one. This is a cheap one. It's uh, you know it's it's a dollar. Well, I got one here, the, the one I was using with the meter, and honestly, I haven't actually tried this one yet. But uh, this end should be clean. It's only actually been in that one, and you know I'm using a blue coupler, but the couplers for SC are the same regardless. I can plug that one in. Ah, eh, about the same, really. Not, not a huge difference. Uh, one thing I did find is that if you stick it into this cleaner here, as soon as you get a little brush against it, it starts reflecting regardless. So that's interesting. <laughs> right when you're putting in these things, the return loss actually goes way up. And this is why you don't use these things, the blue ones, when you're dealing with analog systems. Because what happens is, if you take one of these lasers here and you plug it in, the couple of these bad boys in line, this thing is gonna start oscillating. This is a, a standard fabri Pro type laser. It's ha it has a single isolator stage built in. But you start stacking a couple of these SC connectors on here and you're gonna start to feel it. It's, it's not going to be pretty. In fact, why don't we try that while I'm at it. This is another thing I haven't actually tried yet. Okay, I'll, I'll do this one as an APC to APC adapter. And then, let's grab another coupler and try hooking it up. Okay, I found this green one. So we'll use that with the UPC. Ah, interesting. That's fun. Uh, because this end here is uh, still APC, we're not really seeing the additional losses here. If I dirty this one up. Yeah, you see there, now we're starting to get some increased return loss uh, because of this um, potentially slightly dirty connector. It's got some finger grease on it, you know. I don't really want to ruin these connectors because these are actually pretty good pigtails. So I'll just clean these. Yeah, so that's fine actually. So really the main issue I guess is if you're 
going straight into mostly UPC endpoints here. That's when you start to really fail it, or you have a bunch of these of questionable quality. Uh, because I've had issues and I've been able to demonstrate uh, very clearly that these lasers do get unstable if you start hooking them up through um, high return loss, uh, sorry, low return loss uh, optical links. And it's, it's kind of interesting what happens uh, when you have that. Okay, what I've got hooked up now is laser source as before, I hooked it up to the two-way radio again. I've got this four-way UPC splitter on the end here. And uh, what I want to show you really with this is what happens when you start getting high return loss or again high return loss, high SWR on your optical link, that is to say a low return loss. What I've, what I've done here is I've, I've cheated a bit. I've, I've actually just loosened this contact here. And the, the laser is coming in on this port here and uh, it's just going through an ad the old adapter cable. And uh, you know, I, I can transmit, just uh, inject a signal, and that's a spectrum analyzer complaining. That is the spectrum analyzer behind a bunch of crap. And what we're looking at here is from zero to 150 megahertz. And uh, I've changed the frequency on the transmitter, obviously, but if I key it up, you can see, for whatever reason, when you start applying modulation, it uh, starts working properly. And, uh, and this kind of behavior to varying degrees is something I did actually encounter when using um, an all UPC system with about four or five splices in it. And remember, this is just the laser. I can disconnect, I can turn off the radio and nothing will change about this. This is happening inside the laser. This is amplitude modulation of the laser. And for whatever reason, it seems to be stronger at lower frequencies. As you can see, even as you come up here to several hundred megahertz, uh, it's, uh, it's still there. It's just weaker. In fact, I can turn on the preamp. You can see now it's starting to get really strong. I mean, this just keeps going. I mean, this here is cellular interference, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is uh, 4G and 5G stuff, and this is GSM over here. Now, what I've got here is probably about 20 dB return loss. 20, 25, um, right around what you saw with the splitter when I, when I had a UPC end, because essentially we have a UPC end going into air, and that has a very high, very low return loss, a very high amount of reflected energy. So if I just click that fiber into place, now you can see uh, it's maybe not optimal, but it's a hell of a lot better, that's for sure. So if we just go back to our 150 megahertz view here, uh, you can see some, it's wiggly. It's a bit wiggly. It's not supposed to be like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hook this up uh, straight without just, uh, without the splitter in, because I don't want to get another one. But I'll disconnect signal and this is the noise floor of the uh, active amplifier you're looking at now. It's, um, it has a bit of uh, low frequency noise because of the preamp that's used or the MMIC that's used to amplify the RF. There we go. So what you're seeing now is the essentially the, um, the background noise coming from the laser and this is a very strong signal right here so I can in fact, if I start, I'm bending the fiber now, and you can see it's starting to get a bit unhappy with us. What I also have, I suppose, is a passive detector. Passive detectors are a lot less sensitive for obvious reasons. They, they can only generate RF with the actual photo current you get from the photo detector. But that's my passive detector. That's a pin diode. And that's connected directly to the laser now. So I'll disconnect the uh, active amplifier. And you can see it's, it's not super happy. The power levels are, are very low with these, but I can, with the RF I'm applying, I'm actually saturating the, the detector over here. I'm just sort of messing with the fiber jacket here. Anyway, if we now just take the end of the laser, maybe through a 
UPC pigtail. We'll see if it's long enough. We'll plug this in. Yeah, the BNC adapters and stuff is really cheap in these things. But now, now you can see it's actually very happy. In fact, I'm wondering if I have a weak signal or something coming into it. It's pretty good. You know, just decrease the bandwidth a bit and you can see. I mean, you expect a bit like when I key it up, this sort of hump that appears here, a bit of low frequency noise. Like that's uh, probably something you'd see if you were to hook up the radio directly to the, um, to the analyzer as well, because it's going to have some broadband noise on the output. It's not unexpected. Uh, but there you go. I mean, that's uh, sort of a basic look at, at what the deal is with radio over fiber. Got an article on my blog about it, you know, one about HF over fiber, and then I'm also working on uh, wideband stuff over fiber, like these. These things here are good up to about two gigahertz. And uh, you can, well, you put a bit of effort in, a lot of effort, and you can start making some pretty complicated systems. And what you can also do with these is you can do like remote transmitters as well. You can just put your transceiver into the laser and the receiver, and then you can have an external box that has the power amp in it and uh, potentially antenna switching as well. And we also got a bit of a demo on why these horrible little blue guys are banned because they look like the flag of Sweden.